What's up, Hacksters? I'm here with Kwabana Ajiman at Arm TechCon, and we're going to talk about OpenMV. Hi, everybody. This is uh, the OpenMV cam, and right now I'm showing off uh, us running with a thermal vision camera Ooh. and taking a picture of Alex. <laughs> so as you can see right here, the OpenMV cam is actually able to well. find her body in the picture and draw white rectangles around it. My see fingers are pretty chilly. <laughs> That's so cool. So is this the OpenMV uh, H7 or M7? This is the new H7 that we just kickstarted for about 95k. Wow. Um, it features the STM32 H7 processor uh -huh. that has the same performance of a Raspberry Pi Zero but on a microcontroller. No way! It's a really great bare metal performance if you ever just want to go have fun and go off into sea land. Um, and we also have the FLIR Lepton on board for thermal imaging mm -hmm. and you can do computer vision on a thermal imaging system. Wow. Additionally, we've got an LCD shield on the back so you can actually see what the camera sees on the go. Anyway, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. So what's the difference between the H7 and the M7? So the M7 is uh, it's the same CPU core from ARM. It's the uh, Cortex M7 processor. Mm. Oh, that's why it's 7. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The M7 was named that, and then uh -huh. ST decided to release a 2x faster, 2x more RAM version. And our naming scheme got messed up, so then we just called it the H7. Cool. So the original <laughs> one was the STM32 F7 uh -huh. processor, and then we're moving to the STM32 H7 processor, which is their highest end. Hmm. Baller. Yeah. So you can swap out the cameras on this module, right? Yeah, you can. So we have the uh, thermal vision camera system. Uh -huh. And then we have two other ones. They both look the same on the outside. Oh, yeah. We have a uh, color camera, which is the one that you get by default. And then we also have a global shutter sensor if you want really, really high quality images. For like super vision. fast, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy can reach up to about 400 FPS. Dang! In particular, there was a, a product called the PX4 Flow, originally built for like quadcopters so they could stare at the ground and do optical flow. And so we built a, a new version of the OpenMV cam that allows you to do optical flow on a quad copter staring at the ground with really high speed. Um, in particular, we have about uh, four to eight times more processing than the original PX Flow camera. Wow. So we're hoping to see what people can do with the OpenMV cam for quadcopter to optical flow when it's really high up in the air. That's really cool. Anyway. This is like a little tidbit about you. This isn't the first time you've worked on cameras pointing at the ground. You've done some really cool stuff with oh. FPGAs for Planet Lab. Yeah, right? yeah. So actually my day job, so OpenMV isn't my day job. Uh, <laughs> hobbyist stuff. Um, no, for to, to actually you know keep food and my hat table and whatever. Um, I do FPJ engineering for, um, I did FPJ engineering for Planet Labs. In particular, I was working on um, the really high-end FPGAs, like $3,000 a chip, yeah. um, to do uh, 47 megapixel image capture, Dang. and then like uh, JPEG correction and such. So are you yeah. using your FPGA chops with this, or is this a whole separate? It's, it's a whole separate thing. It's kind of hard to really use the FPGAs for uh, well, hobbyist stuff, just because you know a $3,000 chip isn't exactly something that, uh, those kind the chips are just a little bit too expensive, so mm. we uh, we're just focusing on like hobbyist level microcontroller stuff for the OpenMV cam. Uh -huh. But yeah, yeah. Um, and then now I work at a uh, self-driving truck company. Um, I found the embedded cool. systems and such. What excites you the most about working on this? Uh, OpenMV? Yeah. Um, actually, it's a weird experience where I enjoy helping people get their projects done and such. That's so weird. Um, <laughs> well, let's just say I, I do enjoy that to an extent. Sometimes uh -huh. it goes overboard, but I like helping people genuinely get something cool done and helping them build a little robot and, and getting into machine vision easily. Yeah, what are people mostly using it for? So our biggest applications for the OpenMV cam are color tracking. Mm -hmm. That's originally how we started developing this product, which was basically to be a uh, more programmable CMU Cam 5 Pixie kind of sensor, yeah. where you can easily track colored objects and then kind of get the detections of where they are and then toggle I/O pins based on that. Oh, cool! So. For like, for example, if you wanted a robot to grab yeah, like yellow yeah. ball so, or yeah, so the best example would be um, getting a robot to like follow a little ball around on the ground, uh -huh. or building a uh, self-driving uh, car robot. So I think I have some pictures of that on my uh, presentation. Oh, cool! Yeah, yeah. So this is a. Uh, has anyone done a robot that assembles Legos? Um, the most. Yeah, people have done that. Yeah. Uh, slideshows. Yeah, so this is oh, the legit. example of uh, of what um, the opening mechanic can see there. Yeah, okay, there you go. So up here we have uh, some folks just doing a little robot that's following the colored ball. And so huh? that's an example of what most people like to use the OpenMV cam for. Uh -huh. And it's just a nice way of getting introduced to computer vision, having to learn about how to deal with the camera, 
how to learn about how to deal with uh, image quality issues, with lighting, mm. and various other things. So it's a great introduction without having to deal with a lot of install processes. Mm -hmm. um, and then, exa for example, then if you want to go it's more like the donkey car. Yeah. yeah. So we ah. have the Open MV Cam. Uh, basically racing over here, and it's able to track this yellow line on the ground and wow. you know run a robot car at a pretty high speed. And for this example, it's actually uh, doing another algorithm called um, linear regression uh -huh. to uh, find the yellow pixels in the image and then draw a line through them. Uh, and the robot steers to stay on the line, basically. Cool. And that same kind of thing is happening down here with this full robot. Oh yeah, you can see the little... Yeah, so that's basically what it's doing. We have That's the binary image of the robot segmenting the field into black and white, and then it's doing linear regression to find the center of the line and draw and basically travel. Yeah. Super yeah. cool. Yeah. So earlier, you have this one plugged into USB, but that's not what's actually doing the... That's just for power, right? All the processing is happening on the camera yeah. itself. Yeah, yeah. So I can put this with a battery and huh. connect it like this. And so we sell everything with the battery. Sparkfun uh, will provide you with uh, lots of lipos. They have a whole production uh, system set up to get those because they're kind of like you know you can't ship batteries, but whatever oh, right, the case. Yeah. But see, anyway, we sell the LCD screen, and um, we also sell the OpenMV cam, and you can get the FLIR lepton. And That's you super can, cool. We'll uh, get to the close-up. Basically, uh, can the camera actually see it? Yeah, anyway. Yeah, so cool. And you've just uh, you've just wrapped up a Kickstarter yeah, for this. You yeah. said you you raised 95k. Yeah. Uh -huh. So cool. Yeah. Uh, what was that experience like? Like, what would what do you wish you had known going in? Kickstarter has changed a little bit from mm. um, when I originally prepared our campaign. We focused on making a really nice video. Yeah. And um, didn't really put a lot of game into uh, doing the marketing mm. or making the web page, etc. Look oh, really yeah. awesome. Um, one note for if you're doing a Kickstarter, the game has changed from the video being the most important thing. Uh -huh. It's now about kind of clickbaitish. So you need, to put oh, no. a, you need to put together nice GIF images like this oh, yeah. that let people scroll through really quick because they're not going to watch the video actually. Right. And, uh, That's true. I never watched the video. Yes. Yeah. So uh, and back though, about five years ago, uh, people actually did that. The video was the most important thing, and the campaign usually was not the thing people put effort into. Yeah. And there's whole companies based around producing your video for Kickstarter now. Oh yeah, yeah. But it's it's really a, too bad for them. It's really a consumer product kind of marketing experience now. So if you're going to do a Kickstarter. Uh -huh. You really have to invest a lot of time and energy into creating a very, very uh, comprehensive Kickstarter campaign. Not just a video, but also a campaign web page of graphics, of GIF images showing off what the product is doing. Mm -hmm. And then also you have to focus a lot on the marketing. Um, because Kickstarter is now kind of, there's been a split between, um, I think uh, there's a company called Hardware Supply, or what are they called? Crowd Supply? Yeah, Crowd Supply yeah. for like hacker hardware projects. Yeah. And Kickstarter and Indiegogo are now focused more on consumer products and such. Yeah, even their like design and tech sections are mostly designed. Yeah, consumer products and such. Yeah. So you, if you're going to go on Kickstarter to like make your own little um, embedded system, yeah. you're really going to want to try to focus towards on making it consumer friendly-ish. Uh -huh. And if you're trying to make an embedded system for hackers and such, maybe go to crowd supply. Ah, oh, cool. That's good to know. Anyway. <laughs> uh, what do you think you learned from the last time? Oh, well, we kickstarted the first one, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, but we did everything better for the first one. So oh, we yeah. had like a, <laughs> No, so for the first one, we had uh -huh. like a pretty lame video. So we uh -huh. like did a much better video. Yeah. And we put much more effort into the campaign and we put like a, some effort into marketing yeah. and, and various other things. But it's all like I didn't understand when I first uh -huh. got into that how much. So OpenMV is really just a two person company that we run in our free time. Uh -huh. And um, real, the realistically, if you're going to go on Kickstarter, you're competing against people who are like doing this with like a six person company yeah. who's fully dedicated to making that product go. So they yeah. have like someone who's really working the marketing angle, you know, 100% of their time. So it's a different ball game if you're going to get into it. Yeah. How do you balance the two? Like your uh, day job and the open MD stuff? It's it's hard now, I'll yeah. say that. Um, I had more free time uh, <laughs> uh, previously, but uh -huh. now since open MV has gotten a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. um, I spend most of my time actually answering emails and running the website mm -hmm. and doing help support. Yeah, that but, um, takes up a lot of time. Yeah, it does. But, but it's uh, awesome that you're spending so much time on it because yeah. companies do neglect that. Uh -huh. And then people end up just completely disenchanted. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. We have uh, help support is the best thing you can do. You really have to have a good help support game. Yeah. Answer every single email. Yeah. Um, but then uh, realistically, um, I only really get to do development on the weekends really right mm -hmm. now. Um, weekdays is just spent answering emails and help support and you know running the website and et cetera, so running business operations. Yeah. That's cool, though. Yeah. That, it sounds like you, you have all your shit together. I think so. <laughs> Until awesome. taxes come. Anyway. Oh, yeah. That's terrifying. To be honest, that's like one of the biggest things is like 
stopped me in my tracks when I've thought about ever like launching a thing myself. It's just uh -huh. like you have to do so much paperwork and so much taxes and everything. Not, not really. No? If you uh, found your company as an LLC, it's just tax through taxation. So it's just like huh. the company just appears as extra revenue on your um, uh, on your uh, tax return. But uh. but you have to go through a lot of steps of forming the company first, getting right. a business banking account. Um, getting a virtual P.O. box to have an actual address for your company. Huh. I mean, there's a lot of business setup operations you have to do to kind of prepare for that. Yeah. But once you do it, though, you can you know have a company that kind of runs itself a little bit. Sweet. Oh, that's good to know. So when are you shipping these? Oh, yeah, yeah. So for the OpenMB Cam H7, uh -huh. um, we have the M7 on sale now. And for the OpenMB Cam H7, we're going to be shipping these probably uh, next year, around uh, February or January. Wow, that's so soon. Awesome. Well, it's... I, wish we could I guess it's sooner. already basically a complete thing. Oh yeah, we're already done with the design and everything, yeah. and we scoped it all out. The the issue is we had to do a production order of ST chips, so we were yeah. actually buying from the factory now, um, ten thousand uh, STM thirty two H seven chips. And when you're going to go to buy from the factory, there's a lead time of uh, fourteen weeks or so. Oh, okay, yeah. And so that's they, not, like, yeah, they might be able to pull in a little bit, but it's like ten weeks or something, and so it's yeah. a few months. So once we get the chips, then we'll already have all the other components, and we'll be able to build everything in one cool. go. But we're just waiting on the chips, really. Um, uh -huh. Trying to build a product, and when you're sourcing from DigiKey and Mauser, and et cetera, mm -hmm. makes it very expensive because they're charging about 2x the price of the chip when you can get it from uh, ST directly. From, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good to know. So people can find this on Crowd Supply? Um, no, we're on Kickstarter. Okay, Kickstarter. For I should have gone to Cloud Supply, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, I feel like some people do, like, one after the other, like, they do Kickstarter and then... I don't know. So we have our current store yeah. right now for the M7 open. Yeah. And just to make life easier for me, we're going to segregate it into two stores. So uh -huh. we're going to have a... Uh, we're using backer kit. Mm. And um, we're going to have a Kickstarter pre-order store. Okay. Which, uh, after the campaign's finished, we're going to put up a backer kit store uh. which you can go on to and you can pre-order items. Cool. And we'll have a main store, which you can go to just to buy now. And we'll keep running those until we've actually fulfilled the uh, Open OpenMBCAM H7 order, and then we'll shut down the backer kit one. Oh, cool. And, we'll we'll just, have and then everything just move everything to the main store. So where would they find this? Do you have a dedicated website for it? It sounds like uh, It's the H7, all ones? the product specs and everything are on our current store. Okay. Um, you just can't buy it there. Where do um, people find that? Well, there's a link right when you visit our website. There's a huge link okay. that says go to our Kickstarter. So and we'll put that into the description so that you can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, HTTP um, <laughs> colon slash slash openmv.io. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for talking. Pleasure.